Hello again YouTube, Mad Dog here. Welcome back to my channel. So on this video I'm going to be showing you guys and lasses how I go about replacing the shaft or handle on a hatchet or axe. Stay tuned. Welcome back. So the first job is obviously to order or make a new shaft or handle. I brought this one off eBay and the first job obviously is to measure the length of your existing damaged handle. In this case it's 27 and a half inches and measure the obviously the the width of the head, the opening of the head on your axe um, head there and obviously you need to buy a shaft or a handle which is comparative in size. The next job is to move over to the vise and we're going to remove just simply cut off the main part of the shaft to start with. Okay so you can see I've got the the axe head and the axe handle secured nice and tight in the vise. The axe blade is pointing upward so be mindful that you've got a sharp cutting edge exposed there the reason I'm pointing that upward is because if I do drop this I don't want it falling straight down amputating my toes so advisable to wear toe protectors when you're doing this sort of thing but all we're going to do is take a wood saw and just simply cut off the head from the shaft like so okay so next is putting the axe head in the vise and this time because it's a splitting maul I can actually use the cheeks of the maul to secure the axe head into the vise and obviously I'm going to drive down from the top removing the old stub um, at this point, yes, I'm going to bruise the axe head, doing it this rough assed way, but I'm going to dress the whole head up after I've done, get rid of all the burrs and the dints. I'm not too worried at this stage, so excuse the mucky hands, I've been uh, doing all the projects <laughs> in between this. Right, so I'm going to take a drift, in this case a piece of stainless steel, scrap off cuts and a ball pain hammer. You can use, you know, parts of your old handle chopped up to act as a drift to knock this down however I'm not going to lie to you now there are big popular channels out there I'm not going to name names that are famous for the axe sort of subject and they just show tippy tappy tippy and out it comes that isn't always the case especially with something like a splitting maul or a full size felling axe when it's got two of the round securing wedges metal wedges in the top there if they're in good condition fitting wise they ain't going to come out without a fight i tell you that now so basically we start you know working our way along from the heel to the blade and and back basically what i find is getting right up in the blade end in the the, the small radius here helps to break the initial seal so being mindful that we've still got, although in this case very dull, we've still got the blade pointing towards us and our wrist. So do keep that in mind when you're doing this. So I'm just starting to pound and move back and forth to evenly press the old stump out. I can see there's about a quarter of an inch now just from that little bit of pounding so we keep going Don't make the mistake of trying to knock this out um, from the bottom through the top because obviously 
the neck of the shaft, the stub that you've cut off, will be wider, so you're actually tightening the bond. So as you can see, it doesn't fall out. It's not an easy two minute job, in some cases, when you're dealing with an axe with a good fitting or mould in this case, splitting mould. So that's how far I've moved it thus far. So I'm going to crack on, carry on with this and after much swearing and sweating, once I've removed that I'll get back to the next bit of this video. Stay with me. Whew. Well I'm not joking, I've just spent a quarter of an hour beating the living bejesus out of that to try and get that out. I think as I was driving the the head, the stub out, obviously the wood gets narrower so it should come out easier but the steel wedges obviously they're going to get wider so counterintuitive so it was a, a versus the narrow wood versus the wedges getting wider so I had to rotate by beating forward beating back uh, I even used a small chisel to actually split and weaken the head the stub but we've got there I've got it out now so it's not as easy as some people may show you if the axe head already has a good fixing which that one certainly did it put up a right fight <laughs> so in doing so I have bruised and scuffed the sides of the cheeks but I'm not too worried I'm going to dress all that out and address that later on but now I have the stub out so I can clean the inside of that hole up just with a file I'm just going to use you know like a second cut bastard file just to take any burrs off the inside of that like I say not rocket science it doesn't have to be micron accurate just make sure you've not mushroomed any of the cast over now obviously you can remove these wooden shafts by fire however you've got to be careful when you do that because if you create a fire that's hot enough to burn all of that away, that material away, you're also creating a fire that's hot enough in some cases, especially with thinner chopping axes, to alter the metallurgy or the annealing of your actual axe head. So you don't want it to get softer or harder in some cases. So you've got to be mindful of the action of fire on your tools, any tool. I'm just giving it a quick deburr and again be mindful of the sharp edge even though in this case <laughs> you know it's a uh, very blunt this poor old splitting mall in its previous owner's life has seen some abuse to be fair and whilst I'm abusing it at the moment I'm, uh, I'm being cruel to be kind you might say so I'm just giving it a quick cat lick all over it has been thrashed on the back with a hammer by the looks at some point so I'm going to dress all that out as well make it safe obviously any tool that develops a mushroom on the back where it's been pounded and mushroomed over um, it's recommended you grind all that surplus off because if you choose to you know batten or pound on the back of that which you shouldn't in my opinion but if you do especially metal to metal small fragments of that material can fly off you know stick in your eye they basically become like shrapnel off a grenade especially when you see people using hard on hard as in hammer on anvil you should never bang two hammers together they can explode and cause serious injury again i know you guys and lasses already know most of this and this is pretty much aimed at people that are new to this sort of hobby of ours so please forgive me, I'm not teaching you guys and lasses how to suck eggs. I'm only an amateur at this sort of thing myself. I don't profess to be an expert woodsman or anything. That's not my field, it's not my forte. But um, it is something that I've played with all my life. I have had in training field regarding bushcraft and survival, you might say, in the past. From um, <laughs> a good source, you might say. We'll leave it at that. But that doesn't include this sort of stuff. This is I'm basically self-taught. I'm time served. I'm a 
skilled time serve man. So I've done five years at college in my youngster days to become an engineer, but not in this field. I'm actually an electrician by trade. Anyway, enough feckling and deburring. Let's get on to the next bit. Okay, so the next part of this process, so I've gone ahead and got my new shaft, um, but they, they come a standard size, and this is our splitting mole head. Now, a little point is, don't forget which way around top and bottom is. You know, top is obviously narrower than the bottom, so obviously as you drive the wood in, um, your shaft in, it gets tighter the further down it goes. So don't make that uh, schoolboy error if this is the first time you've ever done this. So we take our uh, head, keeping the top to the top obviously, and we offer up our new shaft handle radius to the front obviously, and it doesn't fit. Because, you know, every axe head, especially if they're hand forged, um, are different. So we've got to make this fit our head. And what I tend to do is I take the, um, the actual shaft head and I've got a rough idea through experience what shape and profile I need and I basically carve it. I use, in this case, Memora cans ball and I'm just carving, chipping it out, just rough assed at the moment to remove material into the profile that I want to fit um, the axe or the, the mole's head. <clears throat> now at this point the only thing or bit of advice I could give as an amateur in doing this is however much material you remove from one side remove from the other as accurately as you can because you want your axe once it's hung to be as central and as perpendicular as you can to your shaft um, that way your blows when you're throwing some good long throws will be as accurate as you can be you know with your with your experience level so if you've got a um, an axe or a, a hatchet that's that's off as, as I call it that's that's got a, um, a bias or an offset to one side or the other it can really make life hard work and the downside to that is once you've got use to that offset and you're chopping away as soon as you pick another tool up that's different and probably set true it can make a massive difference to your performance and safety you know so <clears throat> in my opinion do your best that you can do to make your your hanging of your hatchet or axe as central as you possibly can and a big key feature for that is keeping your material removal as even as you can so once we've done this, and we've basically, it takes time, you know, like everything. I like to use a knife. You could use a draw knife um, or some sort of, you know, electric device, an electric sander, whatever you want, or whatever you've got. I like to do it this way because this is going to be used for chopping wood. <clears throat> so I like to use traditional methods to give it that ability. It's just me, I guess. I'm a bit of a weirdo. <laughs> but I enjoy doing it. So, so slowly, slowly. We're going to carve that until it roughly fits and then we're going to take it back to the vise or your um, your horse, your draw horse, whatever you may choose to use and we're going to sand that profile to get rid of any open grain then so that there's no natural weak points in your grain to cause splits etc. So stay tuned. Okay so we're back over in the vise and we've got the shaft held in place either with soft jaws if you have them or a piece of sandpaper doubled over just to stop it bruising uh, the vice bruising the shaft and um, basically all I'm going to do now is take my piece of sandpaper doubled over and start putting a finish on our uh, initial fitting so like I say I've gone ahead and chopped out most of the material so that our maul or hatchet just starts to fit now so it's just trying 
you know it's nearly there with a the tap that would go on so that's the sort of fit that I'm after at this point so, another game of patience you could use an electric sander if you have one but, um, I think this way you get a better sense of centralisation you know if you're a little bit thick and heavy on one side I can concentrate on that area specifically and iron out, iron out any sort of um, differences, variability within reason you know it's a splitting mall it's not a chopping axe or a felling axe so I'm not too worried this is really a bit of a demo now I know this is going to be a long ass video but there is no easy quick way of showing you properly my method I'm not saying it's the right method but my method of doing this all these jobs if you're going to take your time to do them where it's worth doing usually take time So what I'm doing, I'm trying to sand the area to give me a finished area which is as deep as the axe head plus half an inch. That's what I usually shoot for, something in that ballpark. So I'm going to carry on with this now. I'll bring you back when I get somewhere near. Stay tuned. Okay, so we've now got a reasonable fit. And um, I guess now it's time to start to drive the head onto the shaft. So I'm going to take the head, place it on, and um, just give it a bit of a tap to start with. Okay. And I want to centralise it at this point as best as I can. Okay. So yes, you can knock it from the shaft down. Um, personally, I like initially to take it outside now and drop it down to knock the shaft up using the weight of the maul. So I'm just going to do that now and then um, I'll cut back and show you how far I've got with that. Okay, welcome back. So I finished pounding the maul head onto the shaft. Um, in this case, to be honest, I've not gone as deep as what I would have liked. Um, it's just flush, and I mean just. <laughs> but it's a splitting mall, so I'm not too worried. So now I've got a piece of hardwood, which you can either make or buy these. I've got packs of them somewhere. Um, hardwood wedges, which fit into the split in the top of your your shaft or your your handle. So. We're going to drive that home now. So I'm going to take it to the point where it becomes quite resistive with my hammer, not splitting the wood. Once I get to that point, I'm then going to take another scrap piece of wood and place it on top and really drive that home as best as I can. Okay, so as you can see, <laughs> that's not going anywhere. Okay, so once I'm happy with the integrity of my wedge, I'm going to cut the excess off. Um, square that up a bit. And, um, right, take my saw. Take the uh, surface off. Just got a rough cut to um, cross cut to file there. Just going to rasp it down basically. reasonable now 
Now, what I have also got is a couple of these steel ring wedges again. Now, you can get these off eBay or Amazon. You can buy them as a kit. You can use the serrated um, plate type. But for this type of application, I do like these, but I'm just going to use one. I don't see a real need for two. I think all you do is run the risk of splitting out your your new shaft. But before driving this home, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a small rack tail round file and deburr it, take out all the, the excess from the galvanisation process to make it a nice smooth internal bore at both ends. Again, nothing flash or fancy. And then I'm just going to follow the profile of the cutting edge just to give it a nice sharp lead because sometimes because these things are mass produced you don't get a real nice finish um, obviously for the for the price and the amount that these things are banged out in the quantity they're banged out in they're going to be needing some finishing so basically all I'm doing is creating not a blade but a sharper edge on the point that we're going to drive home just to make life easy like so nice and easy and now I'm going to place that make sure I'm good and tight in the vise I'm going to place that just off centre towards the back that's where my um, handle is widest and uh, try and centre centralise it as best as I can and then drive that home then with the dowel or the um, drift that I used to knock out the old head I'm just going to sink that below the surface make sure it's seated down well and now we should have a good well solid well fitted mole head back on a new shaft and yes it's bruised and yes it's battered and unfinished but I'm going to address that now I'm going to take my time now sand the handle take all the burrs and the dings and the knocks out of it I'm going to do the same with file sandpaper um, I've got a um, flap wheel in a grinder here I'm going to just roughly take that mushroom head off and make it all pretty and nice and smooth and then the last process in this is boiled linseed oil to the new shaft to preserve it and soak the head to draw all that linseed oil up into your new head so that that will actually swell and set and make that bond even tighter more water resistant and um, good for the future so stay with me for the last bit of this process okay so I've gone ahead and dressed up the axe a little ways or the splitting mull I've taken the mushroom off the back of the the pummel there and basically what I've done is streamlined it because it's a splitting mull I've basically made the pathway of resistance less for that splitting action so taken any sharp gnarly edges off I've put a secondary small bevel on the cutting edge I've give it a reasonable edge now it is sharper and the reason I've put a secondary bevel on and a convex grind is because it's a splitting mole so whilst I want it to be sharp to initially engage into the log it doesn't have to be cut in razor sharp because the weight and the wedging action does the splitting so the secondary bevel basically means that the cutting the initial cutting edge of this axe should last longer it's more durable so I won't have to keep sharpening it as often so there we go there's the handle dressed up as well um, I've rough sanded at the moment because I want the pores left open because as you can see the next bit of the process now is to drop it in this here tub which I have a linseed boiled linseed oil mix and um, worktop oil 
um, Scandinavian work top oil in, in here and basically now I'm just going to give everything a liberal coating of uh, boiled linseed oil mix I use tissue paper to wipe down the oil onto the handle purely because as we all know the boiled linseed oil if you use a rag you know a cloth yeah. whilst that rag is drying it produces heat and can in, a, in some cases self combust so I just use tissue paper because I can throw this straight into my fire pit burn it anyway and there's never an issue you know never a safety issue then especially in here in the shed because it is a bit of a tinder box in here to be fair I'm just giving it a liberal coating all over and with age and, and more use and more more coatings of this um, oil the and with patina the um, the shaft will darken with age the handle and it will take a nice warm characterful glow well, that will come with time and use and more coats of oil but for now we've got it oiled and basically I'm going to let that suck in I'm going to leave the head in the oil to soak up into the, the actual wedged joint as it were now I want that to swell and become really really tight so that will be good so that pretty much concludes this now um, I just thought I'd share I know it's been a long ass video so if you are still with me I appreciate it and thank you all very much I'm just showing my way of doing things not necessarily the right way admittedly I'm no expert at this sort of thing but um, to show that it can be done with minimal equipment at home DIY style and um, don't be afraid of having a go save yourself some money just make sure you do it as safely as you can um, be mindful of that sharp edge always treat any any blade or any cutting tool or any tool with respect I'm say so I'm addressing this video to newcomers really and um, anybody out there wants to leave comments hints tips or anything that may help me because like I say you know that's what this YouTube's about for me it's about sharing knowledge and learning together please feel free to do so I'm always open to constructive criticism <laughs> I'm not a snowflake so go ahead and leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments below um, like I say I know it's a long video but there's no easy way of showing this sort of this sort of process in a three or four minute video without skipping a lot of the truths and a lot of the mythology metho, metho, method <laughs> methodology um, which a lot of channels don't show so I wanted to show that it isn't always straightforward it isn't always easy first time everything doesn't always take two minutes so be prepared to fight <laughs> anyway thank you all very much for watching as always uh, I'm quitting now because I've rambled on way too long but I um, hope you find it useful uh, at least some of it and until next time Mad Dog signing off for now take care yeah